I'm currently in a Ford Ranger. It's got the ABS warning light on. It's got that hill descent control malfunction warning light on. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what caused that fault to be on and how we fixed it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do a full system scan of this vehicle. Now this is a Ford Ranger 2015. It's got the 3.2 liter engine in it. And with this Autel MS919 scan tool, it shows me the topology layout when I'm scanning it. The faults that are showing up is ABS, PCM, TCM, and body control module. And there is a fault code on each of those. The first one is the powertrain control module that has cylinder 4 glow plug circuit open. Not overly worried about that one. Transmission control module is the second one and it has invalid data from the anti-lock braking system on control module A. Next one is anti-lock braking system, the ABS, the right rear wheel speed sensor is showing up a fault in that. And lastly, the body control module, intrusion sensor module. So for now, I'm focusing solely on the, the transmission control module with the anti-lock braking system as those two are definitely linked. And I am going to zone in on the right hand rear wheel speed sensor and bring the vehicle for a test drive while monitoring the live data and see if that right hand wheel speed sensor is doing anything at all. So I bring up the um, PIDs that I want, just the wheel speed sensors and I focus in on that while I bring it for a drive. As you could see there, the right hand rear wheel speed sensor was completely dead. It was reading zero the whole test drive. So what I do next is bring it back to the workshop, put the vehicle in the air and start to focus solely in on the rear wheel speed sensors of this vehicle. What I do next is I utilize the fact that I have a wireless scan tool and I manually spin the right hand wheel and the left hand wheel and see if I'm getting any reading. And the reason I do that is to just double check to make sure that I wasn't seeing any readings at all on the test drive as I glance back and over while I'm driving it. But now when I'm manually spinning it, I can clearly see that nothing is happening at all under any circumstances. So with that, the next thing I wanna do is take the sensors out. And a little tip that you can utilize when removing these wheel speed sensors is are they interchangeable from one corner to another? And the answer for this one is actually yes, the wiring length is different, but the actual connector itself lengthwise on the head of it is the same. So what I do is I just make it additional bit of room for the wiring to be able to stretch across and I swap the sensor from one side to another.
this quick and simple check, we can see that the sensor from the right hand side is actually able to read in the left hand side and vice versa. The left hand sensor, which we know was a known good one when put into the right hand rear is now not working at all. So the wheel speed sensors is not the issue and I can move on to my next check. So after confirming that the wheel speed sensors are fine, the next check I want to move on to is assessing the wiring diagram. I want to look up the ABS module, I want to see where these wires are running to and I want to get the pin details on that ABS module and the reason I want to do that is I want to do a continuity test from the ABS module all the way back to the connector on that sensor and what I confirm is the wiring diagram matches up because the color orange and white and brown are the colors that are actually at that wheel speed sensor so then pin 17 and pin 29 is the ones I need to focus in on. And what you're looking at here is the disconnected part of the uh, ABS module. So I've disconnected it, I've removed a backing cover, and then I'm gonna back probe on pin 17 and pin 29. So I utilize my needle type of probing pins in this position. No damage is gonna be done. I back probe on 17 and 29, and I'm able to make up the connections using the um, additional leads that I had as part of my power probe kit, the master kit I had. It's got a nice long lead on it, and I'm able to run that all the way to the front to the back of the vehicle. Now I simply set up my multimeter onto the continuity resistance side of the multimeter, and I'm gonna check the brown wire, and then I'm gonna check the orange and white wire. And with those checks, I do confirm that the brown wire is fine. It has continuity all the way from the rear of the vehicle up to the front. There's an audible change and there is a reading change on the multimeter. So we know that that is fine. The orange and white wire though, unfortunately, I have a confirmed break somewhere along the line between the back and the front of the vehicle. So with that confirmation of the diagnosis, we then have to hone in and find where the actual break is. So what I go for next is the most likely areas that would have a break. So is there bins in the wiring? Is there an area that can have additional movement? The fact that this is an off-road vehicle as well, it's got mud train tires on it, it's gonna have a lot of up and down movement on the rear of the vehicle. So I decide to remove those brackets that are holding the wiring in place, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then I remove the uh, tape that's insulating the uh, conduit and I pull the wires out of the conduit. So that corrugated tubing, and the next part is just finding the white and orange wire and then taking your time and starting at a point and moving back from there and just visibly inspecting it very, very closely. Now, one thing of note on this, you may have a partial break or a complete break. So you might have a wire uh, insulation that's still intact but broke internally from movement or you could have a pinhole in the wire and it could be completely corroded on the inside. So bear in mind, you might have very little visibility to wire damage in some cases. So do take your time and make sure that you're analyzing the color wire correctly and following it all the way back until you find the break.
Now I was able to successfully find the break as you can see here. So the next step is very straightforward. You're gonna peel the wire back. You're gonna make enough room. I just get an additional piece of wire to allow for a little bit of extra movement in that area. We're not gonna just join the same wire again because there's not gonna be enough of um, a release on the tension. So we need additional wire in and we're gonna solder it up. I don't show this process, very straightforward. We're attaching a wire, we're soldering it up. I use heat shrink to cover it and then I put all the wiring back in position again and I tape up the conduit so it's nice waterproof as much as I possibly can and secured and now we're going to recheck to make sure that we have continuity from the front to the back before we fit everything in the back position again and when I do my continuity checks on those wires I now have continuity on the brown wire and also on the orange and white wire so now the process is just fit everything back together. I have diagnosed this, I've found the fault, I've rectified the fault, and it's just a case of putting everything back together. So I drop the vehicle down, I clear the fault codes, and then I bring it for one final test drive. So I'm just on the final test drive with this vehicle now, and as you can see, all the lights are off. I've got the Autel reading the live data here be beside me, and that uh, right-hand rear wheel speed sensor is now reading like it should. So by following those steps and methods, uh, first of all, we went after the sensor, we checked that, uh, we utilized the fact that we were capable to move the right to the left and the left to the right and we were able to confirm nice and easily that there was an issue not with the sensor but further down the line. I then decided to go ahead, get the wire and diagram, figure out where the pinouts were for the uh, ABS wiring to that right hand rear wheel and uh, up at the module we checked continuity between that all the way back to the sensor. We were able to see that the brown wire was fine, but the orange and white wire had an open circuit. So after that, it was a process of elimination, and uh, we went for the most obvious spots with the kinks on them, no more than a door loom, um, a wiring going into a driver's door or passenger door. The, the ones with the most movement, the corner, the angled areas, are the most likely to break. So it was able to find the break, repair it, put it back together. Now the faults are all clear and this vehicle can go back to the customer. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found those steps useful and informative. If you have an issue like this, using, those, um, using that methodology to find and fix the fault might be successful for you as well. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.